Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to ETS 21. To where, today we have another very special guest for you, Paula Gold Williams, the president and CEO of CPS Energy. Paula, is very excited to have you back for your fifth ETS. How are you doing this afternoon? Oh my, um, I'm, I'm doing great. And uh, congratulations to you and the C Z Prime organization for this being the fifth. I mean, I always thought that uh, what you do is special, but it's a testament when they can still continue through COVID and everything else. So congratulations and excited to be here. Sure, sure. Thank you. Yeah, the second, the second virtual one as well. But uh, the fingers crossed that we will we'll be back in person next year. Uh, but we're going to make the most of this and have fun in this conversation. So thank you for being a part of it. And and wanted to start off with you know you've been there's been five ETSs uh, and just want to get your thoughts on maybe one of your one or two ETS moments over the years. And I'll just share a quick one uh, before you do yours. So. My first memory actually of you was uh, was at ETS 16. Uh, this is when we had it at the Paramount and State Theaters. And I believe you and Eddie went down. And so my mom, as you know, you got to meet my mom a few times. Yes. She, she's the biggest fan I have. Uh, and, and she was there, she goes every day. She went every day and she told me, she pulled me this, uh, Jason, there's this uh, gentleman and a woman, you have to talk to them. And she didn't know who you were. Uh, but then I finally put two and two together that it was you that she was talking about that the whole time and Eddie. And I was like, this, so now this all makes sense why my mom, when she was always connecting dots, even since I was young. Uh, but but I, I remember her pulling me to the side two or three times during that event. And I was like, mom, I'm trying to do something here. And she's like, yeah, but you've got to make sure you meet. Uh, and she didn't, I don't think she remembered your name, but but she had said like Eddie was in a hat. And then she pointed, it's like, okay. And then the next day is when I, when I actually met you, met you. So that's, that's my, ETS story of, of Paula. So we'd, we'd love to hear one of yours. Well, number one, tell your mom I said hello. She's absolutely lovely. And, and you're right. I, it was clear to me that she's a an absolute great connector and kind of probably where you get a lot of your uh, your ability to bring a lot of things together. So tell her I said hello and, and I look forward to next year. Um, I, I remember meeting, meeting your mom. That was a great moment. You know, I think it's wonderful that when, when your family can support you, on your dreams and just really be engaged on it. So one of my one of my highlights was the fact that I met her and I, I was just impressed that she could take the time and and really be in the thick of this energy movement and evolution. So it was it was a pleasure and it's always a pleasure to see her. Uh, I would say also another one I one I thought you were going to mention is I remember the first time that I remember that theater um, set up. And I think we had our COO, Chris Eugster, on the stage, but it was, it was, you, you were creating a dialogue. And so through the whole conference, and that's one thing I love about, you know, what you do in the ETS uh, uh, whole session, the way it's just very engaging and it is about the conversation, but I was in the audience and before I knew it, we were, we were talking from audience to stage and I was, uh, it was, it's such a, organic situation, I actually somehow got invited to come up on stage. So I moved from being in the audience, being a participant to actually being able to come on stage and have a dialogue and still feel like we were having a conversation with everyone in the theater. So um, I thought that was special. I hadn't seen that before. And again, I've seen uh, the ETS kind of morph in a great way and, and, and evolve and create all of these events that are engaging and putting different folks on the stage and making energy super interesting and really trying to connect not just those of us who work in the industry directly but those of us who those of us who are broadly connecting across different you know different industries be it the city or you know technology or um education, all of those things happen through the, the ETS. So those are those are a couple of great experiences that I have. And again, I think this is one of the one places that I've seen it over and over be repeated to be that organic and that that interactive. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. That that's that, that's my second favorite one. I have video footage of that one too. Uh, it was a pretty, pretty actually it was a funny moment, but also very engaging. Uh, and another side so I just spoke with uh, Peter Kelly Detwar a few weeks ago, and he brought up his conversations with you and how uh, he features the work you're doing and CPS is doing in his new book, The Energy Switch. And, and he definitely alluded to these, you know, that we, we can curate the conversations, but that 
that organic, when you put the right people in the room, the, the, the best conversations start happening uh, unscripted. And that's what we, we want to keep that going for sure. And we thank you for being a part of that. And then also can't forget that ETS 18 when you were the thought leader of the year. And that was that was a lot of fun and a very cool. Oh my. Uh, and we have seemed like we came a far a long way from some of the early, early, early days of the theaters we used there. So that's Oh, it was an honor. I mean, you know, like at, at the experience itself, but to be um, to be honored by ETS, I mean, that was a huge milestone for me, but even more so. But basically, I represent um, 3,000 hardworking employees, and I think our, our company pride of being able to, to represent in the industry and be recognized for the things that not only we, we think, but that we actually execute was huge. And again, it's been a great place for me to meet people like Peter. I mean, um, you know, he and I have talked and, you know, he's, he's doing all this wonderful stuff and trying to bring our thinking through the, uh, to the forefront by writing books and, and articles and really, again, um, probing into some of the most provocative things that we're trying to solve the issues. So again, I, I, I have so many, I could, we could probably spend the whole time on that, yeah. but I just want to thank you and the whole, uh, Z Prime organization. Oh, our, our pleasure for sure. And uh, so you, you had a good point about the CPS Energy team. Uh, we're, we're very fortunate to work across uh, several of the great, great teammates that you have there. Uh, but I want to just 20 months into this pandemic, you know, what, what has really kept the CPS team uh, moving forward during all this time? You know, um, I would say that of course, we're anchored in this concept of people first, but I would tell you, you know, when I, when I launched it, when I, when I took over the helm of the company, I really believe that that phrase was just embodying what people felt internally, all the stuff that we don't always articulate. But I do believe that in, in essence, we're just very mission driven and we understand that we are an essential service. We understand that it's really important to serve customers. And I think our ability to, to anchor to that over and over again and see the, the huge need uh, that it, that's been in front of our entire community in terms of having a moratorium, for example, on disconnects. We haven't disconnected anyone since uh, the March timeframe. And um, just, just thinking again, what can we do differently? How we've done outreach, our whole outreach has changed uh, because we want to make sure that our customers know about our programs and other programs, but that anchoring, like being selfless and thinking about what do others need and the mission of what we do and the history that we have and the way that it's been done for over 161 years, that's kept us at the core, you know, focused. That was a job that we needed to do before the pandemic and before Storm Uri. That's what was important through those crisis periods, the era that we're still kind of working our way out of. And that's what's going to be important going forward. How do we serve? And, and, and how do we make sure that people get back on their feet? When they, when they get back on their feet, when our customers are, you know, back, you know, in the jobs that, that help them, um, you know, live the lives they want to live and that technology and energy are in fact helping that transition, then I think that's that makes us uh, proud and honored to do that and keeps us anchored and keeps us from uh, dwelling on the negative. We got to always think yeah. about how do we solve problems. Yeah, yeah, good points. Could you maybe touch on maybe a, a few of those programs? Uh, I know we're, we're hearing a lot across the nation from different programs coming out to, to help customers get back on their feet. Uh, we, we know about the, uh, the early outreach, but maybe maybe a few programs you could highlight about uh, for the customers there that, that are still struggling. Well, absolutely. I would tell you that um, we actually have quite a few programs. We've had programs um, for years. You know, how can we be helpful? I mean, it ranges from seniors to, to veterans uh, to uh you know, just different ways that we can give them discounts, affordability discounts for just people who are really needing uh, an, some extra assistance. So they get discounts on their bills. So those have always been important to us. And we've had um, a residential energy assistance program for over 20 years. And in that case, we, we put uh, at least a million dollars, sometimes uh, more, two, three million dollars, but we also get um, contributions from customers. We ask customers to contribute. All of those monies 
go through a process that where we're partnered with the, the city and the county and we're we're accepting applications through those arms and people can get credit so that program has continued like many of our others but to your point we created the let's outbound call uh, which again utilities don't normally do outbound calls we you know we try to step up to take all all the calls that come in we realize that people normally call when they have a problem but now we realize that our customers had problems that were bigger than their energy bill it was about their jobs or um what's happened in their family and who's been who's been afflicted with COVID, those kind of things that have really stopped them. So that outbound call outreach, I, I'm still very proud of it. It started during the pandemic in June of last year, and it's become award winning. We've, it's, it's received multiple um, modes of recognition because it's, it's so unusual. Again, we're calling not just because we wanna help with energy solutions, we're calling to tell people about other United Way programs the food bank, um, mental health, any any type of assistance, and we'll we'll also help bridge that digital divide. We will look things up. Our our energy advisors are so amazing. They will look things up for our customers, give them phone numbers, connect them. Sometimes we'll call the agency on behalf of the customers, and sometimes the agencies will say, "Why is the utility company calling?" And we said, just because we can and our customers can't, we got We have to be that bridge. And we think that's important. And maybe one of the most recent programs that we created was our Energy Angels. It was interesting about, you know, even about six months ago, somebody would call and say, you know, um, I really think a lot of Jason, he's, he's, he's kind of down on his luck and I want to be able to contribute information to him. And I, I want to know what his balance is. And, and because of our rules associated with not giving out customer information of any time, your balance amounts, your account information, you know, your account number, any of those things, we don't give that out. We were kind of telling people, well, we can't really tell you what to pay, but I, but we were talking and goes, that just makes no sense. We've got to be able to say if somebody really wants to help Jason or Sue or uh, you know Rick or whoever, um, how can they do that? So we have a program. If you call us up and you say there's someone in particular that you want to help, we call them the Energy Angel, and we help them connect and get credits on the bills of people who they want to want to help. And it's kind of like the angel investor program. I mean, I, yeah. we just think it's, um, we think it's important that, you know, people have this desire to, to give and they, and many people have remembered when they re fell on hard times. And if that is that what they want to do, then we needed to have a program to do that. So it's one of our newest and we've gotten some great contributions through that. Some organizations, again, what they want, sometimes they'll tell us you go match the need, but oftentimes they will also say, can you target the need of where it needs to go? And it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I mean, anyone helping any, anyone is important. And I think that's, you know, oftentimes I say San Antonio is just a, a community where we're about two degrees of separation. So you know someone who knows someone. And so why not again be the connector to help people get get what they need, the assistance they need. Yeah, 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 good, good points. Uh, yeah, as you're talking to that, like the picture that came to mind is, uh, it, yeah, my mom used to help both my grandparents on my mom's side, my dad's side, with a lot of that calling uh, when, when they needed to answer a question or something. Uh, they didn't speak English very well, so my mom would kind of step in. Uh, but but it, I, I can imagine just that relief of, of, of many families that you guys are helping that uh, where they don't they don't have someone to help them out and they have someone there to help them guide through some pretty tough times. So uh, congratulations, definitely much uh, well deserved on those awards on that program. And thank you for sharing that. Uh, another another great thing that kind of might come out of this is what we've seen is whether we like it or not, customers are engaged and, and, and really want to see what's happening with this energy transition. So want to get some of your feedback, like how do we leverage that attention that we have from customers right now uh, where they're invested in this energy transformation system? How can we leverage that, that attention we have from them right now to help, help the industry move forward? You know, I will quote uh, Cheryl Sandberg on this one. We lean, we lean into it. I mean, you yeah. know, the concept about whether or not we want it, I think, I think we absolutely want that engagement and we want, we want more people to be interested in where the industry is and where it should go. And we definitely want them to tell us their thoughts and ideas. Now, to your point, sometimes I think the challenge we have is that it, it may not be a dialogue. I mean, people may be in, you know, 
kind of inserting themselves in that conversation because you know they believe that um, there's only one truth or one way to look at things. And what I really want to do is encourage people to bring in and let's have a dialogue, right? We, we want to hear ideas and we want to say, hey, we have a challenge in doing that. Um, with that challenge, what, you know, what, what other idea can you help us think through as a solution set? We by far don't think we have all the solutions and we by far don't think that a lot of solutions are even created yet that we all need. Uh, but I do think that dialogue and that engagement is something that we have to lean into, encourage, um, be willing to listen to one another. I mean, I think, you know, our goal is to have ears open all the time and to take it. Now, again, sometimes I, I know that it could be confrontational or there could be frustration, uh, but, I, but I think as long as um, we're trying, right? As long as we're, you know, it's frustrating because we all want, we all want the same things. We want clean air and we want, you know, clean energy and we want, we want everyone to be, have reliable and resilient power. And we, we want it, we want perfection. And, um, and why not? Why shouldn't we? But, but to get there, we have to move from the, the issues of current state, the problems that we currently have, and then all work together, keep talking about one step at a time. How do you do that? How do you make it work? But I think it's just absolutely critical to keep talking along the way and invite everyone into that conversation and, and just you know create um, manageable rules of engagement. Let's, let's try mm -hmm. to be constructive every time we, we go through and, and again, be open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's definitely a difference between dialogue and then shouting. The shouting aspect, uh, especially when uh, it, it, there's uh, real emotion and, and, and anger involved, uh, but we definitely want to encourage the dialogues. So on the dialogues, you, you guys have done. Uh, there's a flex power bundle. You, you guys are having, um, it, but but has that created some new opportunities from partners uh, by by kind of leaning into this, some of these these emerging dialogues? Absolutely. Um, so so their flex. What we have is a flexible path. Again, we the reason why we have that and we've had it uh, in you know, created. I, I I wanted to create something in 2017, and the entire CPS Energy team has helped kind of br bring it to light. And the whole point again is be open. I mean, you know, sometimes uh, my predecessor Doyle Benenby, who was also an energy thought leader uh, before me. Um, he would say, sometimes people can't take yes for an answer. <laughs> and so even utility companies, I mean, you know, sometimes we're like, oh, that new technology looks good, but, you know, let's do it this way because it's tried and true and proven. And we we had to stop doing that. And, and part of the flexible path strategy was about us being more open to solutions and seeking them out and not being afraid. I mean, I still have a vision that San Antonio can be the energy pilot of the world because we should be open and trying to encourage people to show us their latest thinking on on whatever new development it is and again we have a community that's big enough now it's very price conscious so affordability is important we can't do everything we definitely can't do everything without partnership with businesses and and levels of government those kind of things but we can we can seed uh certain projects that are small and then as they get better and better, we can help take them to scale. And I think that's what, what has to happen on the innovation front. And to do that, to seed it, we do certain things. We actually have kind of a shark tank focus. We have a group that a group that helps us spearhead it. It's called Epicenter and it's head, headed by Kimberly Britton. And um, that group helps us um, bring in talent for new ideas. And so we're all the time, if we get a, if we get something we can look at and think about those small projects, those are great. And we can see, we can see all types of things. You can see um, solar systems that have a cooling and a cooling system to it, or a solar system that has an auxiliary system that helps it be more efficient. I mean, believe it or not, solar panels can get too hot and solar systems can get too hot. That doesn't make any sense, but it's true. So um, those are important, but we also have from the flex, uh, you know, our flex strategy, we have the flex power bundle. And that's where we took that RFP and sent it across the globe in 10 different languages. And we created a general profile up to 900 megawatts of solar, up to 50 megawatts of of energy battery storage for fast response and 500 more megawatts of firming capacity. And that firming capacity, I think is what's really interesting because that's where I think we, we wanted to see, and we did see 
um, some additional ideas about new technologies. And we'll be putting out some more information about that shortly. Um, you know, look, I think I think everybody kind of, you know, is hopeful, for example, that hydrogen is going to be this next big thing in the in the industry. But but from what we saw in the RFP, we didn't see a lot of large scale hydrogen that really was effective. And it, it does have to beat the current technologies in some ways. And we just think that's further off. But we want to see it. We want to see where it is in the maturity. And then we want to see everything else, you know, in between. So um, we got about 600 different unique proposals. So a lot of them were primarily solar, different, different ways to do it. Um, there was quite a bit of battery storage, and then there was a good chunk of traditional, um, but but also you know maybe the next step in in um, different types of technology. So we'll be putting some more information out of that going forward. But we think it's important that you actually put RFPs out there and that you incent people to bid on your work. They have to get paid so they can make the technology more effective. And we've got to find a way again to get it in the ground, get it functioning so they can keep building on the efficiency. I mean, that's what really happened to solar. I mean, 20 years ago, it wasn't as cost effective as it is today. People kept perfecting it so the efficiency could be stabilized and the price could come down. And every single technology needs that that map that need they need they need people seeding their projects, they need funding. And we just have to, you know, put put our resources behind these commitments and to make it really, really take effect. So, so we're still on that journey and, and we're still looking um, again, trying to make it all, you know, come through in balance. But that's why the Flex Power Bundle is important. And that's why um, what what Epicenter does with our entire team looking at technology matters. And and the last thing I'll say is we also think generally partnerships work. And so we're also doing a new initiative where we're working on resiliency with businesses and other organizations. And we wanna help them do resiliency RFPs that match the needs of what they need individually. And, and so I did a session this morning with the San Antonio um, airport, uh, the uh, assistant uh, director over there, uh, David Robbins, um, put together a whole event. And, and it's kind of in line with what you talk about, you know, a lot um, is the, how do you take this smart cities concept and start applying it more and more. Well, isn't it amazing that that the airport wants to be a smart airport, right? And but their resiliency and reliability needs are going to look different than HEBs or our, our food grocery store in, in the state, or they may look different than um, USAA or you know any other organization. And so I just think it's super super interesting, and I think these projects where companies are really thinking about their ability to microgrid will also, again, bring in more seed money, more practicality, more application. That's that cycle that will make all of the technology move along and evolve. Fantastic. Well, yeah, that was a great, great sum up there of, of that community-wide uh, resilience and how that's being built and, and have to, uh, obviously, you're creating all those new new conversations that have to be had as we rethink uh, how we bring that better resiliency to communities. Well, Paul, it's certainly been a pleasure. Uh, time always goes by super fast from talking with you. Um, but uh, again, can't thank you enough for joining us here at ETS 21. Uh, and you have an amazing day. Well, thank you. And thanks for the opportunity to, to talk to your viewers and and um, you know people who really follow what you do. Again, I just want to compliment um, you, your organization, Z Prime, and the concept again about making it focused on um, people in the industry and connected to the industry, having those those important conversations and dialogue. So it's always a pleasure for me to participate whenever I can and be supportive. And, and I look forward to doing many other uh, talks with you in the future. That sounds great. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.